Hallelujah. Praise if you have your Bible with you this morning, no, you can turn to 1 Chronicles 22 and 14, but I'm really only going to read a line there out of that verse that the Lord brought me to after He had already led in this direction to preach this message. But in 1 Chronicles 22 and 14, we find some words by King David, and that's who we've been talking about the last couple of weeks. We talked about how that God was looking for a man who was after his own heart, and he found that True. in David. Amen? True. And we looked at David's life and how that he wasn't who man would have picked, but he was who God chose. Amen? Right. Hallelujah. We compared that to that God too. still today is looking for someone with the heart of David. Hunger, hungry for God, thirsty for God. Amen. More, Amen. more interested in God than they are the things of the world. Amen. Exactly. Only in America, and read on. something like this this week, but I'll Come put on. my own tweak to it. Only in America could people gather around the dinner table on Thursday on Thanksgiving and be thankful for what they have, and then at 4 a.m. on Friday morning, stop somebody to death for a Tickle Me Elmo. Amen? Yeah. Because so that they can get their hands on the latest bargain. Amen? Right. At a cheaper rate. Amen? On. So on Thursday, they were thankful for what they had, and then on Friday... They went out and fought each other for the latest release of the latest game or whatever the case may be. Right. They call it Black Friday and that's a good name for yeah, it. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I saw a news yeah. story where a bunch of people in the mall was boxing and hitting each other and yeah. pulling on stuff and that's completely ridiculous. Amen. Yeah, the Bible says love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Amen. Oh, wow. Hallelujah. Right. To have our mind, the Bible says that where our treasury is, there will our heart be also. Exactly. Amen. Some people need to step back and take a look at the way they act, trying to get the latest bargain. Amen. On, Hallelujah. So we see that Bring in America out. today. And last Sunday morning, Reese testified, and she was talking about how that she was thankful that we have a day set aside, that Abraham Lincoln had set it aside the last Thursday. And, uh, November, November to be a day of thanksgiving. Amen. Yeah. And she went on to say how that, but that we need to have that every day of the year. We need right. to be thankful every day Amen. of the year. And I believe that in David we find that praise and that worship in every aspect of his life. When things were going good and when Come things on. were going bad. On, Amen. Whenever he wasn't on the mountaintop, when he was in the valley, right. we find a heart of thanksgiving and worship and praise. Did he struggle? Sure he did. Right. Did he question things? I'm sure he did. His own right. son tried to kill him. Saw who he looked up to. Chased him from one cave to the other. Okay. Tried to kill him. So I know he struggled. But through all of the struggle, we find a heart of gratitude. Right. Through all of the struggle, we find a heart after God. Come on, great. And we see here in this scripture in 1 Chronicles 22 and 14, just the first part of it. David says, Now behold... In my trouble, I have prepared for the house of the Lord. In my trouble, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in my bad days, mm -hmm. in my good days, right. in my valleys, amen. in my mountaintop experience, in my storms, amen, I right. have prepared for the house of the Lord. Amen. amen. Right in the midst of the battle, David still had a heart of praise and gratitude. Right. And that's what God is looking for in us. Amen? Amen? What profit is there or what witness or testimony is there if we can only be thankful when we're on the mountaintop? If we can only be, if we can only praise God and bless His name, Brother Dave, when wow. things are going the way that we want them to go. Amen? Right. In David, we find a heart of thanksgiving and gratitude. Amen. And he said in this powerful statement, in my trouble, I have prepared for the house of the Lord. Amen? Amen? He had prepared, he had still kept his mind, his heart, fixed on the work of God, Amen. his relationship with the Lord, his worship and praise toward his creator, toward his bridegroom. Amen? All right. And in this statement, we see that no matter what was going on yeah. in the life of David, he had a heart for the Lord. Come on. Amen. And the work of the Lord. Amen. 
Amen. And I believe today that we can say that David had a heart of praise and thanksgiving right. and gratitude. Amen. Amen. And with that in mind, I want us to go to 1 Thessalonians this morning, right. the fifth chapter. 1 Thessalonians, the fifth chapter. In my trouble, mm -hmm. in my trouble, in, amen, that's a big word. Right. Looks little on paper, but it really is, it really is a big, mm -hmm. big word. Amen. amen. Not after my trouble. Amen. Not after the storm was over. Not after I was delivered. Not after, but in my trouble, in my sorrow, in my storm, right. I prepared for the house of the Lord. In my, in my, in, in my, my, uh, my, the chaos that was going on in my life. Right. In my trial, that's the word that escapes me. In my trial, I was still had my heart set on the Lord. Amen. On, and we find here in 1 Thessalonians, the fifth chapter, I'm going to read a couple of verses or three or four before we get to the scripture that I want to get to. But Amen. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 14. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, and be patient toward all men. See that none render evil for evil. Uh-oh. We could stop right there and preach a sermon this morning. Amen. Amen. Because the world's mindset is sadly the church's mindset is. I'll get them back. Yeah. Amen. Come on. Did you see what they did to me? Well, I'll get them. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Oh, I could preach it down right down to where we live this morning. Amen. Amen. If we don't say it, we think it. Right. We think that I'll get you back. Mm. Amen. You did that to me, I'll get you back. I'll start plotting and planning and I'll get something going your way that'll do you the way that you've done me. Amen? Come on. Render not evil for evil Come unto on. any man. Come on. You say, well, you don't understand what they've done to me. Yeah. Yeah, tell me about it. Tell me how bad they've treated you. Yeah. And then let's go over and let's read how that they spit on Jesus, how that they ripped his back to shreds, yeah. how that they pierced his his, his uh, head with the thorn of crowns, how that they pulled his beard out, how that they called him the devil, how that they crucified him and nailed him to a tree. All right. Tell and he me. still said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Now you tell me about how bad somebody treated you. Then you explain to me why you've held that grudge for so many years. Then you then you justify yourself to me regardless of what they've done to you. Right. Great. Render evil to no man for evil. Amen. Amen. Don't get back at anyone. Put it in the hands of the Lord and pray for them and go on. Because you know what it really does? It really puts you in a prison cell. All right. It really puts chains on. That's what unforgiveness does. Come on. If I refuse to forgive Brother Sleese, Brother Sleese goes on with his life. Right. I'm the one that suffers from that. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. I'm the one that is grieved and, and, and sorrowful because of that. Hey. So if you have something against someone and you think you're really doing something to them because you're avoiding them, because you don't speak to them, because you shun them, you're really hurting yourself, not them. Amen. Amen? You're right. You're really hurting yourself, not them. Exactly. Render evil for evil. None, see that none render evil for evil unto any man. Right. But ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. Yeah. Verse 16, rejoice evermore. Amen? Amen. Verse 17, pray without ceasing. Yeah. Now we have a little trouble with the rendering evil, you know, not rendering evil for evil. And maybe rejoice evermore is the easiest thing for us. Pray without ceasing. That's not too hard because people are always praying for something. Amen. Oh. Not exactly what he was talking about here. But a lot of people pray. Right. Give me, give me, give me. Amen. Right. Then he says something that is hard for us to, really hard for us oh, to right. get our mind wrapped around in verse 18. In everything, give thanks. Amen. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Amen? Amen. If you want to know today what is God's will for your life, this is a good place to start. Amen? Amen. This is a good place to start. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you, that in everything that you are to give thanks. Right. Amen. There we see that word again. Come on. That begins verse 18. In. 
everything give thanks. Amen? Amen. You might be out there today, you might think, how can I do this? How, can, how is this possible? How can I, in the midst of this terrible storm, right. in the midst of this terrible trial, in the midst of this terrible burden that I'm in, how can I give thanks? All right. If you get the truth that we're gonna, that we're talking about today, it'd be easier for you to comprehend how this is possible. Come Amen. On, how can I do this? How is it possible? Amen. It is possible today if we can get this truth rooted and grounded down on the inside of us. Amen. Exactly. And I can't reiterate this enough. He said, in everything, thanks, give thanks. thanks. There's that little two-letter word. Right. In, amen, not after. Amen. Not give thanks before. Then you can complain all the way through the valley and then give thanks after it's over. No, he said, give thanks in everything, give thanks. He didn't say you had to like it. Now, Lotus knows it. He didn't say in everything like it. He didn't say in everything, understand it. Amen. Come on. He said in everything give thanks. Yes. Amen. True. Be thankful. Say, Lord, I thank you. I know that you're still on the throne. Lord, I praise your name. Amen. I bless your name. In spite yes. of the storm, in spite of the trial, in spite of this thing that looks like it's going to destroy me, I give you thanks exactly. in this battle. Not after the battle's over. Not after the smoke clears. Oh, amen. Perfect. But I give you thanks in this battle. Right. In this storm, right. in this struggle, right. in this trial, oh right. glory to God, I give you thanks and praise right here in the heat of the battle. Amen. Not after I've seen the victory, but before I've seen the victory. Right. Not after I, the smoke clears, but while the smoke's still stirring. Amen. Right. Not after the guns stop firing. Amen. Wow. The battle is raging. Oh, great. In everything, give thanks. Right. And this speaks of making a decision. Not waiting for the Spirit to overtake you. Not waiting for the hand of deliverance to intervene. But to make a decision, much like what David was talking about in Psalms 34 and 1 when he said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Now there's a glimpse into the heart of David one more time this morning. Amen. I will bless the Lord when things are going good. That's not what he said. I will bless the Lord when I'm on the throne and Saul's dead. That's not what he said. I will bless the Lord when I'm living comfy in the king's palace, but not when I'm in the cave on the run. That's not what he said. He said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually, in spite of the storm, in yeah. spite of the trial, in spite of the pain, in spite of the confusion, His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Amen. You're right. In the storm. Amen. Come on, bring it out. When we read the, robes, the, the words of Job in the first chapter, the 21st verse, uh -huh. when he speaks these words, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. Right. And then he says, The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now in the story of Job, we see many struggles. We see a trial like none that we've ever seen before or ever since. Amen? We see a man who struggles. We see a man who questions. But all through this, we see a man whose heart stays fixed on God Amen. and in the bad times uh, he says I know my Redeemer lives uh, and here we find him saying uh, the Lord giveth uh, and the Lord taketh away uh, blessed be the name of the Lord you know what he was really saying in the good times uh, blessed be the name of the Lord uh, in the bad times blessed be the name of the Lord uh, when I'm rich blessed be the name of the Lord when I'm poor blessed be the name of the Lord when I've got when I'm healthy blessed be the name of the Lord when I'm sick uh, and I'm sitting on a heap of rubbish and I'm scraping my balls with a pot chair. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Right in the middle of my trial, blessed be the name. On the mountaintop, blessed be the name. In the valley, blessed be the name. In my storm, blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. 
instead of choosing to complain. And we do that. Exactly. It comes real easy for us. We don't really look at it as a choice because it is so easy for us. Part of our old nature. But we really do choose either to complain or to worship. Amen? Amen. In everything, give thanks. Right where you're at, right in the middle of the battle, right in the middle of the storm, not after you get on the mountaintop, but while you're in the valley. Not after the storm is over, but in the middle of the storm. Amen. Instead of choosing to complain, mm -hmm. instead of choosing to sit down on God, instead of choosing to give up and turn back and go and, and to give up and to turn around and go back, choosing to serve God anyway, choosing to get a bulldog grip on the horns of the altar and say, God, I don't understand it. Lord, you know that I don't like it, but I ain't going nowhere and you're still on the throne and I still trust in you and your word. Come on, praise Regardless of what's going on exactly. in my life. Amen. So how do we get to this place? How do we stand praise. facing the worst storm of our life? Yeah. And in our own carnal mind, our way of thinking, this is going to destroy me. Amen. This is going to be the death of me. Yeah. Have you ever heard somebody say, this is going to be the death of me yet? Amen. That's the way we feel sometimes when the wind's blowing right. and the lightning's striking. Amen. The waves are crashing and our boat's taking in more water than we can dip out. Amen. How do we get to the place where we stand in the midst of the storm and still say, blessed be the name of the Lord? When we stand in the midst of the darkest valley we've ever been in and we still say, blessed be the name of the Lord? How do we bring ourselves to that real Realization. How do we bring ourselves to that truth today? I'll tell you how we bring ourselves to that truth. Come on, pray. If we can get this next scripture rooted and grounded inside of us, yeah. it'll help us that when the storm is raging, we'll say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. When the enemy is raging, we will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. And I know there are those out there when I tell you what scripture we're going to read, you're probably already ahead of me and know which where we're going to. And you might say, Preacher, we know that. We've heard messages on that. We've done studies on that. But we don't act like we know that. Amen? Because when the burner gets turned up, when the flames get to burn, when we get to burning a little hotter, we don't act like we know this. Amen? We act like we're forsaken. We act like we've been forget, forgotten by God. Amen? But if we can get this next truth rooted and grounded inside of us, then we will know how we can stand in the midst of the battle, in the midst of the storm, in the midst of the sickness on our deathbed hallelujah and say blessed be the name on, of the Lord bring. Romans 8 bring it in. and 28 yeah. amen. amen and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God to them who are the called according to to his purpose. For we know. Oh, I wish we did know this morning. Because truly, if we knew, we would act different. We would talk different. We would walk different in the midst of the storm. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to get to the place to where when someone sees me, they can't tell it. But I'm going through the worst battle I've ever been in. The deepest valley I've ever been in. But I still got a smile on my face. I still got a praise on my lips. That the circumstance may be different. But my God is still the same. This morning, hallelujah. Amen. Exactly. I don't want to be one of those where, and I've been there, and I'm, 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 I may still be struggling with it. Yeah. But I don't want this. I don't want people to look at me and think, well, he's really going through it now. And how do they know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's me. I've been, I just, I can't hardly make it. I, I think this is it for me. I'm, I'm barely hanging on. Amen. But I want them to see somebody that has the peace of knowing that in this thing, I can give thanks because I know this thing 
no matter how bad it looks, no matter how hard it is, no matter how bad I think it is, no matter how impossible I think it is, I know that in my God's hands, these things that I face, these things that I go through, can work out for my good if I put my faith and my trust in Him today. Amen. Amen. Yes. Now don't miss this truth. Don't let this slip by you. Amen. If you're asleep out there, wake up. Amen. You're fixing to miss something that'll help you go on a little bit farther down the road. You're fixing to miss something that'll help that'll help you to be able to be thankful in the midst of the storm. Come on. In the midst of the battle. Amen. Amen. We know that all things. See, when we know that these things that we're facing. Right. It's going to work out for our good. Come on. Then, in everything, we can give thanks. Right. Come on now. Well, let me lose you this morning. Come on, pray. Amen. When we know, when we have faith in God's word, right. that He will do what He said. How many people today believe God's a liar? Mm -hmm. Well, then that means you must believe His word. Amen. If you believe His Word, you can't just cherry pick it and, well, I believe this and I believe this. That just means God's part time liar. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. oh. You got to believe it all or you don't believe none of it. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> and if you believe His Word is true, right. and if you believe that God's not a liar, then you believe that he's that when he says that all right. things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. If you believe that, if you're rooted and grounded in that, if you have your teeth sunk into that, then in everything all right. you will give thanks. Because you can say, even though I don't like it, even though it's rough, even though it's a hard time in my life, I know. Amen. And God's gonna take it and use it yes. for my benefit. Amen. For my good and for His glory. Exactly. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. You see, Joseph knew this truth long before the book of Romans was ever written. Right. In the story of Joseph, we find that his brothers turned against him. Mm. We find that they threw him in a pit. We find that he was sold into slavery. Right. We find that he was falsely accused. We find that he was thrown into prison. We find that he was forgotten when two men had promised that they would remember him. Amen? Right. But he knew this truth when he stood in Genesis 50 and 20 and spoke to his brothers who had done all of this against him and said, but as for you, you thought evil against me, but God meant it unto good. Amen. Great. No weapon that is formed against me shall prosper. Why? Because God will take that which the enemy set out to destroy you with and make you stronger. Oh, glory to God. And make you stronger than you were when the battle started. Hallelujah. Amen. He will use it for your benefit. Exactly. Amen. True. You meant it for evil, but God used it for my good. All right. Amen. True. And we could preach a whole sermon just on Joseph, two or three parter. Amen. Amen. Of how that God used. You can look back uh -huh. and see how that through every every one of those circumstances, the few that I named off. Yeah. God used all of that to bring him into power. Come on. At a time when the lives of Egypt, many lives in Egypt would have died, including his families, because of the famine. Come on. Praise Amen. Amen. There will come a time, trust me, you may not see it now. Right. But there will come a time when you look back and then it'll hit you and you'll say, Oh, Amen. I see now what God did with that mess. Right. Oh, glory to God. Praise I could Jesus. preach this morning if I could just get somebody to give me my license. Go ahead. Hallelujah. You meant it for evil. Amen. God meant it for good and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God to them who are the called according to his purpose and when we know this truth the Bible says you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free when we know this truth 
that God works all things together for our good. No matter how bad a mess it is, no matter how tore apart it looks, God and His masterful craftsman, Potter's hands, will put it back together. He'll turn it into something good for you. Amen? And when you know this truth, like the Bible says, when you know the truth, the truth will set you free. When you know this truth, Brother Dave, right. it will set you free from the fear of the things that you're facing because you're afraid they're going to destroy you. Listen to me. Don't miss this. This may be... Oh, glory to God. I said it will set you free from the fear that you believe that this thing's going to destroy you. Brother Sleece, when you know that this thing, God's going to use it for your good, He's still on the throne. He's still in control. When you can stand there in the midst of the battle and give thanks to God, because he is omnipotent and omniscient and he knows what's best for you. Come on. It will set you free Tell it. from the fear that grips your heart when you look at the situation and you think, oh no. Uh -huh. And the enemy whispers and says, This is going to kill you. Yeah. This is going to destroy you. All right. Amen. And you can say, Oh no. Because I know that all things work together. Work together for my good. I know that my God specializes in taking situations and turning them around right. for the good of His people. Amen. Come on. When you know this truth, it will set you free from the fear of the things that are facing the, that you're afraid they're going to destroy you. It will set you free from the bondage of weary and complaint that fills your day as you walk through the trial, as you walk through the valley, and the enemy whispers to you that you're defeated, and the enemy whispers to you that there's no hope, and the enemy whispers to you that this thing is going to kill you. Amen? And why don't you just give up? It will set you free from that because you'll know God's Word is true and you're standing on his word and you'll know that this thing uh, will not destroy me but make me stronger this thing god will work it out for my good Come on, break. that's how you can find it within yourself to stand in the midst of the battle and say blessed be the name of the Lord because you know that the battle is going to work out for your benefit. Yeah. That's why you can stand in the trial and say blessed be the name of the Lord because you know that the trial is going to work out for your benefit. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. Oh, Jesus. My, my, my. The preacher done showed up this morning. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank God. In everything... In, in, in everything. Give thanks. Why? How? Because we know that all things will work together for our good because our God is more than able. Amen. Oh, glory. Oh, glory to God. Glory. And you may be out there today and you may say, Preacher, how can this be? You don't understand. There is no way that this mess can work out for my good. How can God do such an impossible thing? I'm glad you asked me because Jesus said once, uh, with man it is impossible, but with Amen. God all things are possible. Amen? Amen? This is where faith kicks in. Amen? It's the substance of yeah. things hoped for, the evidence of things Amen. not seen. The Bible says that we walk by faith Amen. and not no, by sight. Not. The Bible says four times that the just shall live by faith. Oh, I can stand in the battle and praise his name because I have faith in his word that he'll do what he said he would do. I can stand in the trial and bless his name because I have faith in his word Come on, that he will do Preach what he us. said exactly. he will do. Amen. Amen. So you're right today. None like him. I don't understand it with my carnal mind. Right. But listen, here's some other things I don't understand. I don't know how God in the beginning made something out of nothing. Right. But I know he did because I can see it through eyes of faith. Amen. I don't know how God spoke into darkness and said light be and light was. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. But I know he did it because I can see it through eyes of faith. Amen. Come on. And there's evidence that he did it now. Come on. You can see the something that he made out of nothing. Right. You can see the light that he spoke into existence and light was. Trust me, hold on to Jesus. It won't be too far down the road till you're on the mountaintop and you're looking back at the valley and you too will see God's hand of preeminence in that which you went through. Exactly. Amen. Amen. 
at the very least, when you get through it, you'll have some gratitude in knowing that you wouldn't have made it through it had it not been for God. Exactly. Your faith will be a little stronger. Yes, sir. Amen. True. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. So, uh, I don't know how he formed man out of the dust of the ground, but I know he did. Yes, sir. And through eyes of faith, I see it. I don't have to understand. See, that's man's problem. Right. One of man's many problems mm -hmm. is we think we have to explain this. Mm -hmm. We have to understand this. That's yes. why so many scientists can't grasp the thought of God because they want to figure out where God came from. Yeah. But who created God? <laughs> <laughs> Chew on that one for a while. In the beginning, God. Amen. Right. God always has been. Right. Yeah. God always will be. Will be. Oh, yeah. Dissect that. Mm -hmm. All Amen. right. Man, in, in man's mind, in order for him to understand it, there must be a there must be a start. I must see where this began. Yeah. When man creates something with his hands, Come he on. starts out with something. Yeah. We can't wrap our little pea brains around it, Mama. That God started out with nothing. Right. And spoke something into existence. Hallelujah. That's the kind of God we're talking about. And I know that if the God that spoke light be, and there was light. If the God that made something out of nothing did that. If the God, if God took dust and made it in the form of man and breathed breath into his nostrils, then I know. Yeah. Oh, I said I know. Come on. That this thing I'm going through. That ain't nothing for my God. Amen. Amen. Oh, I said that ain't nothing for my God. Amen. He is more than enough. Preach on. He is more than able. Yes, sir. When I know that His Word tells me that His grace is sufficient. Come on. That His mercy is new every morning. Yes. That all things work together for my good. And that gives me the faith to press on. Amen. And to hold on. And to run on. Yes. That gives me the faith today to say yes. that right in the midst of my trial, Come on. right in the midst of my storm, yeah. I can say, Lord, I praise your name. Yes. Amen. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I worship you. Exactly. Hallelujah. I'm fixing to close. Listen. When the potter takes that old piece of mud and puts it on the wheel. Mm -hmm. All man can see is a clump of mud. Right. It doesn't look like anything. Amen. But the mind, the eyes of the potter work in a different way. True. Yeah. The potter sees what he's going to make out of it. Come on. I've seen some different things of people who whittle wood, you know, and right. make things. And I see, I don't know if I was watching on a, some kind of a reality thing or a, what it was, but someone who did that type of stuff and mm. walking across the field and they're laid an old stick. And I just thought, well, that just looked like an old stick to me. Yeah. Piece of a tree. Mm. And he picked it up and he started looking at it and thought, wow, I know what I can do with this. See, I didn't know what he could do with that. Because mm. I didn't see the finished work. Right. But the whittler did. Amen. See, I don't see the finished work when I think about this whole clump of clay. Oh, glory to God. I don't think about the finished... I can't see the finished work when I think about this old pile of mud, but the potter can. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Oh, Jeremiah said in 18 and 1, the Bible says the word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, Arise, go down to the potter's house, and I will cause thee to hear my words. Then he went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrought a work on the wheels. Yes. Jeremiah was not a potter. So when he saw it, you know what he saw? Just some old mud. All right. yeah. Just some old mud. Something without form. Something that looked like it was useless. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's the way you may look at your situation today. In your life. You may look at your life that way. 
It's been so rough and it's been so bad. This thing looks hopeless. No telling how many people I've talked to over the years in my ministry that they just felt like it was completely, utterly hopeless. Right. But not in the hands of the potter. Come on. Amen. Not in the hands of the potter. Oh, I wish we could get this this morning. Amen. I wish this preacher could get this this morning. Because I guarantee you, if you're not going through something today, you will for too yes, long. Yes, sir. And it will be beneficial for you to know this truth. Amen. Matter of fact, it will be priceless for you to know this truth. Exactly. For you to remember the words of this preacher when you're in the midst of the storm. For you to remember the words of God, of the words of the Lord here that I'm reading to you and preaching to you this morning. Whenever the storm is raging, when the trial is, is more than you, seems like more than you can bear, when the fire is hotter than it's ever been. Come on, preach. And you remember that the Lord is more than able to work this exactly. out for my good. Amen. Put yourself and put your situation in the hands of the potter today. Amen. And watch him work right. the work on the wheel. Amen. Come on. Listen to what he said. And we know this. We've preached on it before, but it goes so good with what we're talking about this morning. Jeremiah said, I went down to the potter's house and behold, he wrought a work on the wheels and the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. Now in man's mind, he might have thought, well, just throw that piece away. It looks beyond fixing. Come on. Throw it away. Yeah. How many people will have thrown you away today? Come on. Amen. Truth. Looking at your life, look, and that's why so many people commit suicide. Amen. Because they think that what's broke can't be fixed. Right. They think that it's a hopeless situation. Uh -huh. Nothing is hopeless with our God. Come on. Glory to God. Amen. Praise. The vessel was marred. The vessel looked useless. Yeah. But the potter didn't throw the clay away, Brother Dave. Amen. The Bible Praise. says so he made it again. Yeah. Another vessel as seemed good mm. to the potter to make. Come on, preach. Glory to God. Praise. And the Lord speaks to Jeremiah and said, cannot, cannot not do the same thing with Israel. And I say to you today, can God not do the same thing with your broken mess? Amen. Can He not do the same thing with your situation that looks hopeless? Can He not do the same thing with this trial that you're going through? With this storm that you're facing today? Amen. Get a hold of this truth today. That this thing, God will work it out for your good. Amen. And then, and yes, then you will be able to stand in the midst of the battle and Come thank on. God and bless His name and give thanks and praise and thanksgiving to God in spite of the situation. Yeah. If the only time You're right. if the only time you have any praise or thanksgiving for God is when everything in your life is going good, you ain't going to spend much time praising and giving thanksgiving to God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. <clears throat> my, my, my. In everything, give thanks. Amen. Giving thanks in all things because... We know that all things work together for good. Amen. To them that love God. He didn't say you had to like it. Right. Amen. <laughs> See, he doesn't make it hard on us. Amen. He didn't say you gotta love this thing. He just said you gotta praise me in spite of it. Right. Mm -hmm. You have to choose mm -hmm. to worship me in spite of what's going on. Regardless of the storm. Regardless of, the, oh, we could talk about Paul and Silas. They didn't wait till they got out of jail yeah. to praise and worship the Lord. Mm -hmm. The Bible says right there in their jail cell at midnight, they begin to sing praises to God. Amen. In the battle, in the storm. Right. Because Paul and Silas already knew that their God was still on the throne and he could use this thing for their benefit and for his glory. Amen. True. So as we leave this morning, let's take away this thought. To allow the potter to work our situation out yeah. for our good. Amen. Amen. That no matter what kind of mess you see, 
When you look at your life, know this, that the potter is an expert at taking an old club of mud and making a vessel out of it right. that seems good to the potter. Amen. True. Hallelujah. He specializes in taking things that look like nothing and making something out of them. Amen. <laughs> oh, that's good stuff right there. Ain't it? That's written by the Holy Spirit. Do I understand it? More than likely not. Do I like it? Most of the time, no. But do I trust Him? Yes. Why? Because I know that His Word is true and that His Word will accomplish that which He sends it forth to do. Help us this morning to be like David who said, In my trouble, I have prepared for the house of the Lord. Amen. If David had have waited to work on the tabernacle or to work on the work to do the work of God when things was going good in his life, he wouldn't have got a whole lot accomplished. He had a lot of turmoil that went on. Amen. But thank God in my trouble I have prepared the house of the Lord. Help us to be like Job. And whether I have or whether I don't, blessed be the name of the Lord. Help us to be like Paul and Silas. That right in the midst of our trial, we begin to sing praises to the Lord. Come Amen. On. Not after it's over, but in it. Right. Not after the storm, but in it. Mm -hmm. Not after the trial, but in it. Yeah, afterwards too, but don't wait till afterwards to praise Him. Amen. Come on. In the midst of your trial, in everything, right. give thanks. Yes. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus Amen. concerning you. Someone else this morning have something. Before we go, hallelujah. Thank you.